Hey Nutmegs, welcome back to another video. My name is Jody B. If you're new here, welcome. On today's episode, as you can see, I'm in my Christmas attire. It is Christmas season. This is my favorite, favorite time of year. I just have a lot of great memories of being a child and it being Christmas time with family and the food and friends. Um, so today we're gonna be making some black cake. Black cake, fruit cake, Jamaican cake, rum cake, whatever you call it, that's what we're making today. Uh, so I'm gonna share my recipe with you so that you can share it with your household and your family and friends. So if that sounds good to you, then let's get into it. So I'm gonna go ahead here and show you the ingredients. It's not a lot of ingredients to make the fruit for your fruit cake. Great to popular belief, you do not have to have fruit soaking for a year before you can make this cake. Um, I'm gonna show you a really simple way to make the fruits right before you make the cake or you can do it a couple of days before, months before, whatever your preference. However, the taste of the cake does not change regardless of how long in advance you do the fruits. So here I have a cup of raisins. These are just California raisins. You can use whatever raisins you have access to. A cup of a mixed peel, and that's what it's called. It's mixed peel. It's just a mixture of different dried fruits. So I have a cup here, and then I have a cup of prunes. And then of course you need your Rhea Nevu white overproof rum and your red label wine. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw in my fruits into a blender. That's my mixed peel. My raisins. And my prune. I say one cup of each, I'm using like an actual measuring cup, a dry measuring cup to measure that. Now in my liquid, I have here about four ounces of the red label wine and two ounces of the overproof rum. So I'm gonna throw that in here. And it's really your preference of how thick or thin how watery you like yours to be I like mine to be thick but not too thick and I'll show you exactly the consistency so we're gonna go ahead and just blend this up and I can already see that it's a little thicker than I want it to be so I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more of the red label wine and the reason I'm saying you don't have to go ahead and soak is because you're literally pureeing the fruit. So there's no fruit to soak. Everything is just going to be one consistency. So you really don't have to do this ahead of time if you don't want to. And this just makes the whole process of making fruit cake a whole lot simpler. So let's blend again. And there we go. I can tell this is the perfect consistency that I'm looking for. Okay, so let's see what it looks like. I like to store mine either in a glass bowl that has a tight fitting lid or a mason jar or a jar that has a top on it so that I can store it. This, this is about two servings, so it will make about two cakes. But if you wanna double the recipe and make more, you certainly can. So that's what the consistency looks like. It's thick, but it's not too thick. This is how you make your fruit for your rum cake. So before we get to the actual cake itself, I'm gonna go ahead and do the lining from my pan. This recipe is one serving. That means it's only for one cake. If you wanna make two or three cakes, you just go ahead and double up or triple up on the recipe. So here I have parchment paper, um, my nine inch pan, I have a scissor and a pencil, okay? And this just helps not to stick. And also when you're putting your rum or your wine in the cake after because we do that for days after every day we put a little rum little 
uh, wine on the cake just to keep it moist and to have it permeate in the cake. When you do that and the parchment paper is in, it helps it to soak up on the bottom. So I'm gonna put my pan on the parchment paper just to see how much I need here. And then I'm just gonna do a rough, rough chop here. I remember as a kid, when my grandmother and my dad were baking. By the way, my dad makes the best rum cake. If you've ever, if, if you know me in real life, then you've had his rum cake and you know he does the best rum cake. He makes tens and twenties and thirty. He, he sells them, he ships them around the country. Everybody loves his rum cake. So this recipe is loosely based on his with my twist because, you know, I'm, I just need to put my stamp on anything I do. Um, so this is my recipe, but it's based on his. He makes the absolute best rum cake. And he doesn't have measurements that he's doing with a cup and he just knows. He's been doing this for many, many years. My grandmother was a great baker as well. Um, so I remember as a kid, she would have me sit there and I would be doing all the pans. I would be cutting and doing the markings and cutting out everything for all of the cakes, which was a lot of cake, but it was fun. So those are the kind of memories, you know, you have as an adult, you remember having as a kid is doing things like that. So do stuff with your kids for Christmas. They'll remember it. Okay, so I'm just, I just have my pan here on the parchment paper. And I'm going to be using the pencil to mark. And this doesn't have to be perfect. To mark the circle. And then we're going to cut it out. And I'm doing it simply where I'm just doing the bottom. But I know people who they do the whole pan, the sides and everything. But that's a little bit too much. We don't have to do that. So here I'm just cutting the circle. And you can cut outside of it so you're not getting the lead of the pencil. If you are concerned about that, you don't have to put that part in. You just cut outside of the, where you mark the pencil. The circle here. And we're gonna put it in here. Of course, we're gonna butter or, or pan but see how perfectly it fits inside. And this allows it not to stick on the bottom. When you're ready to turn that over and take it out, it comes right out. All right. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to get my dried ingredients together. So I'm gonna start off with flour. I'm using one and a quarter cups of flour. And you wanna make sure that the flour is sieved through. And this is my cup. I'm just going to use a knife to kind of level off so we know we have exactly one cup. Again, I'm using an actual measuring cup, not a real cup. Some people do that and then the recipe is kind of skewed off. So I'm just putting it directly here into my sieve. So that's one cup and then I'm going to get my quarter cup here. That goes in there also. Put that to the side. Of course it falls. And then just go ahead and sieve it through. So we're making sure that it's just nice and sieve. There are no pieces. So I'm doing a half teaspoon of salt. And you don't have to use a knife for this. You can kind of just shake it and it will level off. So I just put that through the sieve as well. And then we also need half a teaspoon of baking powder. So I'm just gonna use some baking powder, half a teaspoon. 
to this flour mixture, I'm also gonna add some spices. So here I have a spice mix that I made earlier. This has one teaspoon of cinnamon, half teaspoon of ground allspice, and half teaspoon of grated nutmeg. Actual nutmeg, you just grate it and it's a half a teaspoon. So I'm just gonna add that to my flour. And then I'm gonna add in one cup of plain breadcrumbs. Plain breadcrumbs, not seasoned not panko but plain breadcrumbs and one cup there's exactly one cup in here so i'm just going to go ahead and transfer it to my flour mixture and this just adds incredible moisture to your cake as well as binds everything together really really important that you put this breadcrumbs in so we're going to go ahead and put this to the side so i have an empty bowl here and to that empty bowl, I'm gonna go ahead and add my vanilla. And we're doing half of a tablespoon of vanilla. Half of a tablespoon of rose water. And rose water is just a, a flavoring that we use and it kind of gives uh, the cake this kind of floral taste. We're gonna go ahead and put in the zest of one lemon. So here I have my lemon and we're using an actual zester. And you wanna make sure that you don't get the white part of the lemon because the white part tends to be very bitter. Of course, you wanna make sure your lemon is washed and clean before you do this. You don't wanna be putting um, the zest, dirty zest in your cake. Of course, I'm being a little meticulous here, showing you step by step, kind of the whole process, but you can absolutely just be adding this into the batter itself. I love these little contraptions, make things so much easier. The juice of one lemon and then we're going to put in some pineapple juice. So half a cup of pineapple juice. And this is 100% pineapple juice. All natural. You can put in here. And this is going to be our wet portion. I'm going to go ahead and get my eggs ready. I'm gonna crack my eggs in a bowl separate from everything because I wanna make sure that I don't get any of the shell in there. And also I wanna take out those little white pieces, which are called chalaze in the egg. I don't know why in the Caribbean we do this, even though when we boil eggs, we still eat it, so. But it's just tradition, I guess. It's just something that we do. Okay, so I'm just beat your eggs. And this is just to make sure that it's nice and beaten when we add it to our mixture. So that's good. We're gonna put that to the side and get to my favorite part. My favorite part is actually creaming the butter and the sugar. Now, I use a hand mixer. If you have a stand-in mixture, go ahead and use it. I just happen to prefer using a hand mixture. That's what my grandmother used. My dad still uses a hand mixture even though he makes a million cakes. I don't know, there's just something about using a, a hand mixture. Or mixer, not mixture. Anyway, so I have two um, sticks of butter. There's a total of eight ounces of butter. Don't throw your butter wrapper away because we're gonna, so we're gonna use this and put it in our pan so that we make sure that our cake doesn't stick. So I'm putting that to the side. You wanna make sure that you're leaving both your butter and your eggs out so that they can come to room temperature. So your butter should be nice and soft like you saw there. Um, and your eggs should be uh, room temperature. Why? You want everything to be the same temperature so it mixes well and also so that when you put it in the oven, you don't have to take extra time or the oven's not taking extra time getting everything back up to temperature before it starts cooking. So everything should, everything should be room temperature. Okay, so I have my two sticks of butter. 
Now I'm gonna get some brown sugar and one cup of brown sugar. I'm just gonna use this one here just to try to level it off. One cup of brown sugar. And we are going to cream this mixture like, until it gets nice and smooth. So you want to start off slow. So this is what it should look like. Very light color very light in consistency and very smooth and this doesn't take a very long time and if you haven't picked up my book yet go ahead and check it out jackson really likes ice cream it's on amazon and now that this is creamed i'm gonna take this off get that out and then we're gonna go ahead and add in our eggs little by little not all in one time, we want it to incorporate well. So I'm just gonna do like half. And then the other half. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add in the liquid mixture with the pineapple, the lemon juice, the lemon zest, and the spices. I'm gonna go ahead and add that all in here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add in this dry mixture that's been sitting here patiently waiting for everything else to be ready. Now this is a really great time to go ahead and preheat your oven. So your oven is gonna be 325 degrees Fahrenheit and we're baking this for one hour and 30 minutes. Sounds like a long time, but we're using a lower temperature and this cake is more of a steam than a bake. So it, goes at a lower temperature for a longer time, but trust me, the results are going to be fantastic. So we're gonna go ahead here and add in, I'm just gonna mix it a little bit because we didn't mix it before. Make sure everything is combined with the breadcrumbs and the bread and baking powder, the salt. All right, and then we're gonna Little by little, add this in too. Ah, add the old thing. All right. Go slow. Don't get flour over everything. Okay. Then I'm just pausing because I want to get everything off the sides. And I know you may be wondering, why isn't it black? It's supposed to be black cake. I didn't forget the, the brown in. We're gonna put that in almost last when everything is combined. And then we're gonna also toss in or fruit. I didn't forget about that either. So let's get our browning in. Tablespoons and see what we look like and then add more if needed. And then I'm also gonna add in our fruits. And this is just the fruit that we made earlier, and this is one cup of fruit. So that's the consistency that you're looking for. Not too thick, but not runny and thin either. So I just want to get everything out. And you can honestly just use your hands to complete the process. You don't have to keep beating it. I'm just going to use my hand and hand mix the fruit and the browning in to this mixture. And I think I may need more browning. But I'm gonna do one more. One tablespoon. So what are, tell me down in the comments, what are some traditions that you and your family must have for Christmas? 
for me it's definitely this cake and then I'd say sorrel is another one and sorrel is just a drink that we make out of hibiscus and we put rum and ginger it's really good let's say cake this cake sorrel what else um, ham is something we ate a lot as um, as a kid at Christmas time we really looked forward it's not the ham that we have now it was ham the thick ham that we fry up with eggs it was amazing and nothing tastes the same like it did back then so this is the the consistency and the color I don't like my cake too too uh, black this is um, good enough for me so we're gonna go ahead and get our pan ready so we can get this in the oven and in my tummy so remember before I told you to save the wrappers of the butter and that's because we're gonna go ahead and butter our sheet we have the parchment paper that we cut out earlier and so I'm just gonna use one and get the bottom nice and buttered then we're gonna put down our parchment right and then I'm gonna use the other one to get the parchment and the size and this again is just so we don't have any sticking the cake will come right out I'm gonna put this to the side and then let's get our cake in here so whew, without making a mess all right so this is the consistency as i said and this is enough for a nine inch cake this is a nine inch pan as i mentioned before the one additional thing we're going to do is we're going to make a water bath that's just water in a pan that we're going to put below this cake while it's baking and that just allows it to keep moisture while it bakes it's gonna taste amazing i already smell it i can smell the lemon zest and the spices that allspice that nutmeg that cinnamon you smell all of that the rum of course with the the wine the the wine let's get this in the oven so this is what i meant we have the water bath on the bottom and then the cake at the top and it's in the lowest position of the oven. So you wanna make sure it's as far away from the top as possible. So here we have it an hour and 30 minutes later. This is all done. How do you know it's done? You stick a toothpick in and it's supposed to come out clean. Here I have a bottle with rum, a spray bottle. You can just pour the rum on. I find that when it's hot, it's best to do this because this is when it's going to soak up the maximum moisture. So I'm just gonna go ahead and spray this. Every day, every other day, you're also spraying or putting rum on your cake to keep it nice and moist. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share with a friend. Thank you so much for watching. See you later.